do we have all of our board members present? I can't uh, tell by looking through the participants. Why don't we go ahead and go to the sure meeting and take roll call? But we have, it appears Brandon we have six Mary of them. Yes, Scott. All right, we'll give them we'll give them a minute and then we'll get rolling without them if, if they're not on. Hopefully they'll join us. I don't know if they're hearing. I just I didn't want to start without them. Cindy, are we recording this? Cindy's not on on the online Pam, but yes, we are. Okay. another 30 seconds well it's 501 okay we're gonna get going anyways all right everybody thank you and uh we appreciate you having here being here tonight with us looks like we've got about 38 participants uh this is our july 2020 um diversity equity and inclusion uh workshop so with that said i think we're going to start off just with a roll call uh phil could you roll call please yep president mcfarland here <coughs> Vice President Singer. Here. Secretary Rausch is here. Treasurer Fidel. Here. And Mary, uh, Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Member Lauterbach. Here. Six presidents. Okay. All right, we're gonna go right to the DEI agenda items. And first up is item 2.1. This is uh, an action item, the diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, and or district vision statement. And I think that's going to be Dr. Beasley? Correct, Scott. We'll turn the floor over to Dr. Beasley. I, I don't have a very descript agenda here in front of me, so I'm just, I guess we'll have to talk through it. Now I'm off mute. Yes, that is Dr. Beasley. So glad y'all are here. Uh, it sounds as though we've got most of us on the line and um, I'm sure others will join as we go. I wanted to start us um, at the top, which is to really think about the vision statement that we've presented a couple of times in board meetings. We've talked a little bit about it, but we haven't really had a chance as a board um, to talk through it and the implications of having that holistic vision statement. So I was hoping we could really start there and um, I'm gonna work to share my screen so that we can look at that together. So just as I'm doing that, I'm gonna just back up a little bit so that everybody starts out on the same page. And um, I would like to just start out with a few expectations for today. Um, Typically when I run workshops like this, where we're visioning together, we are all physically in a room. And there is something about the energy that you pick up from people as you are working through particularly visiony kinds of things that's really important. Um, sometimes uh, words, phrases, ideas will hit you physically and in your body language before they ever make it through um, processing to get perfect in your brain and then you say them to the group. And because we don't have that, and I can't read you that way uh, in this format nearly as well, I want to really encourage all of you board members to be extra vocal today. Um, say what is in your mind, even if it doesn't feel perfect, even if it is a stream of consciousness idea, even if it is a question or a challenge, all of that needs to be on the table, I think, for us to come up with um, a vision and some some go forward statements for the district that are really exactly what you want. And so since we're not together and I can't read you, I just wanna encourage you to be extra overt in your expression today and say what is on your mind. Deal? Um, I also would like to encourage you, if it works for you to stay off mute so that as things, unless you've got people in the background or in my case, you may have a rogue cat, um, or teenager, <laughs> 19 still counts, right? Because they still want subway money. Um, so unless you've got stuff going on, but I encourage you to keep yourself off mute so that we can keep the dialogue really organic. Um, then you don't have to think about it before you, you offer comment. 
Um, I also want to just note that this is not typical. Now, I'll say I'm pretty new to how the board rolls. Um, this going to board meetings has been a, just a um, one-off occurrence for me until this year since I've been working more closely with y'all. And so, so correct me, but I don't think that this kind of um, maybe more loosely structured sort of a meeting where you're really ideating together is the norm. Not to say it's never been done, but it doesn't happen all the time. Because when I've been at board meetings, they've been pretty structured. And uh, much of the discussion has, you know, happened in subcommittees. So this is sort of a new experience for me. Is that, is it new for y'all as well? I would, I would agree with that. Okay. Uh So maybe it may, you know, may not be polished and perfect, and we certainly will probably have to backtrack some, maybe ask for a clarification a lot, um, trade ideas frequently, but I am appreciative that y'all are willing to try something different, and I think that this is going to be a really um, effective time for us to get where we need to go. So thank you for being brave in that and willing to try a new format as part of this board work. Um, I'm very appreciative. Okay, so let's think about background for where our vision statement has been in the past. And I don't know about y'all, but um, I'm pretty picky about vision statement, and here's why. I think we really want a vision statement that all of our, and when I say all of our people, I mean our students, our families, our staff, our community understand and that they can they can take action on, and um, and I think this this district has done a great job of that in the past, and so I want to continue that tradition. We want something that is going to be comprehensive, that is going to be consistent throughout the district, and that everyone can. Uh, my personal opinion is, I want us to have a vision statement that people feel something about, that it's meaningful, and it. It evokes action or emotion. And I'd like to just take a moment um, to open it up for any of y'all to uh, talk a little bit about what's important for you in a vision statement. I guess I can start. Um, I guess when I think of a vision statement, it's very important to think of the whole. So we're thinking of the student body. We're thinking of the educators. We're thinking of this um, of the uh, community at large, um, uh, but most specifically when we think about, you know, we are asked by the state of Michigan to educate students. So whatever we do, we need to be mindful of a mission that is, is doing that to the best of our ability. And um, also to keep students safe. And I think this work around diversity inclusion and inclusion is, um, is a piece of that. It's not only to help our students and our educators um, be in a environment where uh, academics can thrive, students and academics can thrive, but also um, students and staff also feel uh, safe in those environments. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Yeah. But I would build on what Pam said is a vision statement to me is is something that each individual in our district, whether it's our students, our teachers, our administrators, or even our board members can individually say how they take action in a daily basis in alignment with that vision statement. And I think when you look at ours, it does a good job of, of doing that, especially with that very first sentence, lead with respect, trust, and courage. Um, each and every one of us can do that. Great. Anybody else? I think when there's more than one vision statement, like if we have a DEI vision statement, then a middle and public school vision statement, it gets it gets murky. And so having mm -hmm. a consistent vision statement that's just one that is strong enough to lead our what we're trying to do, and we don't have to recreate statements for 
um, new programs or new new initiatives that come up. Right. So broad enough, broad enough that um, that that could encompass years of our vision, and it, it can grow with us. Right. Okay. Terrific. That, that's equitable amongst all of our students. That's great, thank you. Thank you for that. I wanna push this just a little bit more um, and, and we won't belabor this if everyone loves it because great, then that means that we really are aligned as a district, but I wanna just be sure I'm going to push this a little bit more because words matter. And we will be talking about definitions as we go forward into our next piece, which is the statement um, that y'all have reviewed. And I think it's really important for us to define what we mean by these things. Um, and so when we were working through that uh, to put this proposal together, we really hammered those out. Um, respect, trust, and courage. Do we feel like that is um, Y'all have said strong and actionable. Is that going to give us um, the right vision to move forward with to make decisions based on those three? For instance, if we need to make a decision based on, um, you know, where we choose to uh, allocate resources. Does respect, trust, and courage really help us to give us a North Star that says, yes, we, we feel like these three things have been honored in this decision and at the same time our students when they're um, having to make a decision about how they treat someone on the playground can say as a kindergartner have I used respect trust and courage during my day I believe so any decision I can think of um, as your example allocation of resources um, I can see this make sense for those um, those times as well. Any other thoughts from other board members? Feeling good about it? I think we should consider any other pieces. I, I'm trying to think of a situation where that may not apply the way that it's written. <laughs> and I, I'm having a hard time mm -hmm. coming up with something. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, So if, if we are all in agreement and there's no more discussion about this one, just to move us forward, um, do we, this is an action item. We're still in 2.1, so. Um, check, check. So but we're good. So I will, I will accept a motion um, for item 2.1. I'm good if you're good. I'll make a motion to um, propose our, District vision is is lead with respect, trust, and courage. Ensure an equitable, collaborative, and inclusive culture. Enable all to achieve success. Support. Okay, motion by uh, Phil, support by John. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have our new vision statement. Uh, Dr. Beasley, thank you. Let's move on to 2.2, please. Great, could you remind me which one is 2.2? Yeah, 2.2 <laughs> is information <laughs> only. It is uh, reviewing the petition comparison document according to the agenda that Excellent. I have. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I will pull that one back up. So this is an information only, and this is really just to take a moment to level set. Um, if there are any questions or any points of discussion from each of the board members, 
I want to just offer an opportunity for us to um, unpack that a little bit. So that's really, that's really at your discretion. I will pull it up. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not yeah, following you, Amy. If you're sharing your screen, I can't see it. I was going to say, is that being, are you going to screen share that, Amy? Yep, it's coming. Sometimes okay. it takes a minute on Zoom. My apologies. Got it. It's circling. <laughs> okay. Well, we will do it this way. When all else fails, you punt. Okay. Can y'all see it just yet? No. Okay. Let me try one more thing. Here we go. Better? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yay. Fabulous. Okay, wanted to just pull this up once more and um, remind us what this looks like. I know we've, we've reviewed it in the past or, or y'all have as a group. Um, just as a level set. So we looked at the objectives from the petition. Um, it had 10 objectives from Anti-Racist Midland and the group that signed that petition. And what we did just to ensure that we all understood what was being asked and what was being answered, um, I went through and did a comparison to the strategy that we have in place that we um, endorsed at the, the May board meeting. Because of the, the sense was there were a lot of these that were embedded within the strategy and we wanted to make a clear path to understand what those were. Um, so looking at which pillar that aligned to the strategic action itself, and whether or not that was currently in progress or was set to begin in the future in this year. Um, so wanted just to remind y'all of what this is and if there are any questions that we need to address in this document, anything that we want to talk about now. Uh, can you kind of walk through it? Sure. So we'll start right at the top. Um, I think the first objective was around co a comprehensive curriculum plan um, that specifically addresses a few key items around systemic racism and white privilege. And where this lines up for us, remember we have five pillars in the strategy. We have governance, leadership, which is our teachers and our staff, our customers, which is our students and families, community and reputation, which is our collaborative engagement with other entities. And so looking at these pillars, this one fits under governance, which would be institutionalizing our policies and practices, looking at our curriculum, anything that kind of is the, the overarching system of how we run in PS. There were a few strategic actions that really lined up directly with that. There's one around um, developing the principles around how we evaluate new materials and books. And then one around an equity audit, which we've talked about a couple of times um, briefly, and developing a prioritized process to audit our existing curriculum. And both of those are in the initial stages already. Those both line up directly with that ask. Requiring diversity and inclusion training for all staff. Y'all stop me if we need to, I'm gonna run us through and then stop me if we need to, to touch on anything specific. Um, we had been doing some diversity and inclusion training for all staff that was opt-in. We agreed to make some of that mandatory for this year. And so that one is well in progress and those opportunities are, are being developed right now for the school year to come. So some of that will even start in August. Mm -hmm. Some of that will be mandatory based on this strategic action. Some of that will be additional supplementary training that others can still opt in to. So that one is in progress as well. Amy, who's doing that training? Thanks, that's a great question. Um, the intention is that that training is gonna be a mix. So 
Um, the vision for that is that I will do parts of that, that we will have external facilitators do parts of that, particularly around the technical uh, classroom pieces of that. We'll have some um, guest experts come in, and then there will be some peer training as well. So it'll be a mix. I love to, and I would love to get your feedback on this, but um, I love to do train the trainer whenever it's appropriate and possible because that really builds those skills and allows us to cascade that throughout the schools effectively, throughout any organization effectively. Um, one thing to note is that we, we see here a DEI 101 and we will, we're planning currently to do a, a module for that on our opening day right at the or right at the beginning of school so to have that right out of the gate but everyone is, is starting out prepared and on the same page yeah when we talk about this i think about the work that's already been uh, in process in some districts i visited gross point uh, earlier this year and participated in a day-long training event where they had mm -hmm. um, some external trainers and some in, two teachers internal trainers they did mm -hmm. all did a fabulous job and there was good um, content talking about non uh, uh, bias and um, just uh, story sharing and understanding mm -hmm. you know where uh, different people were coming from in their experiences to then really have personal conversations. Um, so hopefully we can kind of see, um, see what we can learn from others too that have been in this mm -hmm. space um, a little longer. And I know uh, Mike has uh, been in contact and, and knows a lot of these uh, superintendents at these districts as well. That's a great point. And as you'll see further on down, that's actually one of the asks from the petition is that we um, that we lead and collaborate. And so I think the training place really gives us a unique opportunity to do that with with districts around the state. To your point, Pam, that are um, that are ahead of us a little bit on the journey or who might have tried some different things already. So agree. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts there? When I think about curriculum, I think about, you know, I'm ex excited about, you know, uh, an audit or looking at that, but I do mm -hmm. know that that's a process. It's not, I, I want to set expectations in the community too. To, so hopefully our students and families and educators don't think like August 1st, we're going to have all this new curriculum mm -hmm. now because it doesn't happen that way. And, um, and, you know, being able to see what's available and what we can purchase and, and you know, have that process be very intentional over time. Mm -hmm. I think we heard some great commentary on at our last board meeting um, from teachers about that process. Certainly great feedback. Um, one thing to note too here, as you're saying about expectations, Pam, if we do this well, it will take time. And so in the meantime, what we can do is perform some pre-audit that will help us begin to streamline the process now at the same time that we are deploying the really thorough audit of everything. So we can do a both end and yeah, that will allow us to make, make some progress now. Yeah, it's important to do the pre-audit to see where we are today mm -hmm. so that we can show our progress over time. Sure. Now, Amy, just so I make sure I understand, I'm keeping up with the conversation, the, the curriculum audit is different than the, the equity audit. Part right? of the equity audit. Part of, Part the, equity of the equity audit. audit. So can, can mm -hmm. you expand more on the equity audit then and what, sure. what that sure. looks like? Sure, that's a great question. So if we're thinking about um, a true equity audit, that would, and if we're looking at that from an, uh, at a holistic DEI perspective, so if we're looking at the whole system and recognizing that really sustainable culture in diversity, equity, inclusion, so an equitable and inclusive culture um, can't rely on any one part of the system to drive it. It really has to be embedded in all the parts so that 
each person in each unit of the organization has responsibility and accountability and is empowered to make that culture sustainable and actionable. So if you think about opportunities for equity and inclusion in, for instance, in HR, so around hiring, around retention of our talent, around the way that we, we make decisions on advancement. Um, if you think about in our facilities, how do we determine equitably across the district where uh, resources are allocated? If you think about, um, oh gosh, what else do we have? I'm trying to think about our different subcommittees. But you can see that all of the parts of the system, our policies and practices, um, you know, it, all of those parts are integral to the system being uh, real and sustainable. And so the equity audit looks at all of the parts and ensures that we have equity um, in all of the policies, practices, guidelines, and then just how it plays out through our system. So even in you know, classroom technique, that's an integral part in um, the way that our building teams come together, that's an integral part. So the equity audit um, over time will help us to look at the whole system versus uh, pocket by pocket of what might be uh, more equitable and inclusive. And so it will tell us where we're doing really well, because we are in some areas, and it'll tell us where we have work to do. And we know we do. So it, it helps us prioritize our work. So would this be an audit that like someone, an auditor comes into the building and uh, maybe walks around with the principal and just kind of uh, watches and sees how kids move about the building, what's being said, how, how you know, how the day-to-day -day operation happens and then come back to us and or or that building um, and share that information so typically so we've done some research on what's out there and typically it's a mix of a number of different approaches so you can imagine there would be some surveys some focus groups some conversation with leadership um, there would be some targeted um, interactions around practices that are really important. So you probably would have some classroom observation. Um, there would be some deep dives in other areas like our policies around HR, because that's usually a place where there's a lot that we can, um, that we can touch that can really affect equity and inclusion. Um, and then curriculum is gonna be a pretty, uh, I'll say dense area, because there's just a lot there. Um, and there are some processes that we can put in place. So it's a mix of all of those things. So um, one thing I want to approach. Yeah. One thing I'm thinking of uh, is uh, have a, uh, we need to have such a focus so that we are all team players and doing this together and our mm -hmm. educators and our students and don't feel like they're being put under a microscope to be caught mm -hmm. doing something bad, but to be uh, say, okay, you know, we've been, we've, we're honoring what we've done for years, but um, let's just look at what we're doing and get another perspective and work together to move forward. Um, but mm -hmm. in that process, we need to be in a very safe space to be able to do that. Um, sometimes uh, when you're talking about uh, DEI, um, it can be a little intimidating because uh, folks don't even want to say what's on their mind because they're fearful they're going to say something wrong or say something mm -hmm. that's going to be taken the wrong way and the intention isn't um, mm -hmm. felt. And, uh, you know, I just, when we talk about these things, we need to be mindful of um, who's receiving the information and that we're all in this together. We're not trying to pin, we're trying to make progress and really impact outcomes, but we're trying to do it as a team. Does that, if that makes sense. It does, thank you for that. I'll give you one example. I was with our um, curriculum team, mm, gosh, probably February, March, and we were over at Woodcrest and having the meeting and happened to get a minute to go into, I think a fourth grade classroom and the, it was just a classroom, like they were just doing their thing. 
And about three minutes in, I think I pulled Penny to the side and I said, this is the most amazing example of equitable, inclusive learning. And I am not an educator, but it was loud and clear. And it was in lots of little things that were being done right in the classroom. And I think we probably have lots of those that we just don't know to name as equitable practice or as inclusive culture. And the audit will really help us to do that for us to be able to highlight those things that are strengths for us. And again, to help us prioritize where we want to do our work next. Yeah, and I think that is important to be able to see where we are, you know, where our strengths are and, and make sure mm -hmm. we're celebrating those along the way and really uh, then just look to, to get better, to, you know, share sure. those practices um, across the district. Yep. I think whenever we've got work to do. Whenever we're focused on our strengths um, and what we, you know, where we want to be and where we want to go, then we, we create a lot of energy around that. But as soon mm -hmm. as we start talking about um, our deficits, it creates a lot of anxiety and it depletes a person of their energy. And um, I think if we're mindful in how we do this too and, and create a strength-based approach, then, um, then we can keep that energy alive. Anybody else have thoughts about that, that piece? I agree with you, Pam. I think in my experience, there's also some great power in being able to honestly name where we are and so that we know how to get better from that place. And so I think making sure that that is part of that equation is really important. And I think, I think we can do all of those things positively and move forward in progress. Um, we talked about, I think it, I thought it was further down the line, but encouraging our peer schools. Um, so that fits for us under the reputation pillar, uh, again, about collaboration and about benchmarking ourselves against leaders in the field for best practice. And so this fits with our action around evaluating those existing collaborations. Um, there is a long list, and I have added some more just this week as we're looking at professional development opportunities. So that technically says initiate third quarter. Um, a project team will start working on some of those more broadly, I think. Um, but I think we have tons of opportunity to collaborate with other districts and ISDs around Michigan and even out of state on this work. We also have, I think, the opportunity to bring some other maybe smaller districts with us on that journey. So regionally, certainly lots of opportunity there. Uh, number six is our, or five, is our district-wide statement, which we'll get to in just a minute. This was the only one that didn't fit necessarily in the strategy as written because it, it really exists above the strategy. It is an umbrella to the strategy itself. And so, um, so it doesn't really fit in a pillar. It's more across all five. Uh, banning the Confederate flag on district property. I'm going to change that right now to complete. That feels good. Um, and the hate speech guidelines that we will work on in future are going to be, again, going back and looking at the entire guideline and ensuring that we've done all the work that needs to be done to close those loops. Um, that already rolls up to a board policy, so it's not, it's not a big change from here. The next one is uh, making a public commitment to hire more teachers and administrators of color and supporting current faculty members of color. So this gets back to that idea of uh, embedding inclusion and equity in everything that we do. Um, we looked at our hiring practices um, and some of the events that we do um, back in the spring and discovered that there were lots of touch points where if we made minor tweaks that we really could affect the outcome of that hiring process. And um, it's really just a question of pulling it apart, analyzing it with the new lens and putting it back together and um, lots of energy around that, which was exciting. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to do any of it yet, but it's coming. So we have already instituted some of those changes in the hiring we're doing now. Um, so that work will continue. As we know more, we do better. 
um, so the old saying is no better, do better. So that's what we're doing. Um, again, going back to overall evaluation of policies, that's going to be work that y'all do with Mike over the next year um, or, or longer. Um, that does take a while to do. So that one is in progress and will continue. And then uh, the last one, which, which maybe hadn't occurred to all of us, uh, about supporting teachers of color, and this one is really important. So it's, an, it's necessary to hire. It's really important to retain. And what we know is that um, having that community support, that affinity support is crucial. And so starting to build resource groups, we know that those work. We have seen in other arenas where those are the differentiator between whether people stay or don't stay. And that goes for all kinds of dimensions of diversity. But particularly right now, if we're looking at uh, teachers and administrators of color, let's put some things in place to support. Um, there will be some things through HR that we can do to onboard, help us retain, and then as you, as you are um, advancing through your career, working on some resource groups to support. So that's in progress. We'll stop there. Any other thoughts as we're going through? We all good so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Amy, um, I was just thinking about, yeah. sorry, cut you off. I, I was just thinking about no, hiring um, and was just wondering if this is a good spot for us to, to reach out and collaborate with other community partners, right? Because at least um, in trying to hire people of color on the private sector side, it's always been a challenge to work on the spouse or the, the partner relocation to, to the area as well. And was just thinking about how do we, as a district, reach out if the, if the partner of a teacher that we're trying to recruit is, is not a teacher and has, um, has to find employment in other, other industry, mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's maybe a mechanism right now for that outreach to occur, but is, are there certain things that we can do with other community partners um, to collaborate in this area? Absolutely. I think um, in, the, in the past, that was more of a regular um, cadence that, that all of those departments were, were cross-talking all the time about those opportunities. And maybe in years past, um, for lots of reasons, that's not as robust as it, as it could be. So I think that's a, an easy win for us to start putting those connections back together. If you think about the hospital, um, certainly Dow, HSC, we've got all kinds of opportunities just right here to do that. Mm -hmm. Great point. Okay. Next one down for us is the data system. So there was a request for um, a way to, to report and track any incidents um, of discrimination or harassment. And that fits for us under leadership because that really is sort of a leadership and administration roll up. We've done a couple of things already to move us in the right direction to do something similar. Um, looking at the database systems that we do have and ensuring that we can integrate all of the data we already collect so that we can get a complete data story. We've been working on that and um, developing a system for us to get that rapid response in each school. So the active ally report and respond is meant to really um, supplement the work our counselors and teachers already do with some of those key point people in each school to receive any reports of um, or any occurrences of um, discrimination or harassment that are happening in, during the day at our schools. So now there is a mechanism for that to be collected, responded to well, um, and then rolled up for appropriate follow-up. Um, so those, both of those things have happened. We're now moving to the next pieces, and those all kind of happen in parallel. But there's a couple of, and this is the, the data nerd in me coming out. Um, you can't let Pam and I get on this, uh, this <laughs> tangent, because we will. Um, providing education on how we ethically report and analyze our DEI data. 
there are ways to do that really well. And some of them are not obvious. Some of them are not uh, intuitive. And then there are ways to do it that aren't as, um, as ethical that are intuitive. And so we need to have some really good um, expert help on how to build our data um, analysis and our reporting ethically. We've got lots of, um, of experts in the community who can help us with that. Integrating all of the data we do collect, making sure that that is integrated into our system, that is actually nearly done into the system we already have and that each teacher has access to. And then creating a dashboard that we can report publicly um, the appropriate data ethically and that we can make that very transparent. That's our end goal. That's gonna take a minute because this is another place where it's super important to do it right, even if it takes a little bit longer. Um, but that one is, we are putting the right steps in place to make sure that's done well. Amy, one of the things I think about with the dashboard, now this is the second time I've heard about the dashboard in a week. It, one was at city council, they talked about a dashboard mm -hmm. as well. And I think about outcomes that our community wants to see around DEI. And I'm yep. hoping that um, our outcomes flow together so that as a community, we're working toward the same, the common goals. And I know with Cultural Awareness Coalition as well, there's a lot of different groups that really want to mm -hmm. be a part of, of something great like this. And uh, if we can think about that when we're putting dashboard to, together. And I know yeah, dashboards are really hard uh, in school systems because there are a lot of rules around what you can share and what you can't share, so. Sure. Yeah, I think there's a sweet spot though, right? Where we can, we can share information that helps everybody engage with the work that we're doing and helps yeah. us um, report transparently without without any concerns around confidentiality. So we just gotta find it. Yeah, yeah, measuring things uh, helps, uh, helps everybody to find their North Star. That's right. Um, this next one is really important to me. I have been an MPS parent. I have two that have graduated from MPS now and um, two of my four. But this one is around developing resources for, for students and parents at home. It's really important for us to mirror what we are um, instructing at school around DEI, um, providing the, the ability to mirror that at home, providing the ability to mirror that in the community, because it takes all of us. And it takes um, everyone speaking the same language and understanding the same concepts and working the same work together over time, really to make it sustainable and real. And so this is something that um, fits under customers. And what we, what we are doing is developing some learning for students and a companion series for parents. This is something where we've gotten some good feedback from our advisory team. So that has direct parent and student input. Um, and we will continue to seek feedback on that one. That's a project team that we will um, pull in both parent and teacher liaisons to help us do. The next piece around mental health, um, I did not include this one in our strategy because it really belongs, I think, in a different space, not so much in DEI, certainly important um, for DEI and having that, that link to um, wellness and great care, but it, it doesn't belong in the DEI strategy at this point. And um, the last is to provide public updates periodically. This falls under leadership and it falls under a district communication plan, including a rapid response. And this is something that I think um, many school systems are starting to do as I've done a lot of research around best practice. Um, this is one that historically really large school systems have a communications director or team, and they do this um, all the time. It is now becoming more normal for um, school districts our size to have communications resources and a plan so that's something that we're going to work on coming up. We've done a little bit there already. And part of that will be, of course, that public update. Mike is already doing that some through the communique, um, but we can, we can certainly expand. So that's where we are on the alignment to the petition. Any thoughts 
discussion we need to have around that before we move on. It makes me feel good that we we already you know we've been working on this for a couple years and I feel like you know we've got movement in all the different areas but by uh, creating creating even more intentionality I think we we can mm -hmm. strengthen strengthen those areas as well. As part of one of the requests, Amy, under diversity training. Uh, in the request, mm -hmm. it was stated that by an independent organization. Um, so are we just doing that internally? It's not going to be an independent organization? We actually are, um, just to clarify, we will, we're proposing a mix. So certainly having both um, external experts come in around very technical pieces of it and around some maybe more um, experiential pieces of it so having that in two two different arenas and then having some internal train the trainer training and then i'm technically uh external so i will be doing a couple of our initial phases of training okay are there other options available to us um grants and different things for for dollars because i know later in our when we get to our regular board of meeting Board of Education meeting we're going to have tonight mm -hmm. of COVID-19 and, and PPE and things that we have to do to make uh, our schools safe, to keep our teachers safe, our students safe, everybody safe. And we have the CARES mm -hmm. Act, other things that are out there available to us for, for dollars to, to be able to do this. Are there any other grants or anything available to us to, because there's a lot of, of, of dollar signs to these things, which with anything that we're going to do there there is a, an expense to that is there any help out there available to us to to be able to achieve all these things i'll answer real quick and then i'm going to see this off to penny um thank you for that because i think it's a great question and very practical um one thing that i want us to to uh, include in this idea is that if we can collaborate with other districts to provide training for them and them to us Think that's a natural place to collaborate but that's only appropriate for parts of what we're doing so i'm gonna let maybe penny speak on what we have available for funding training where our opportunities are i agree with your statement amy and uh i'll defer to mike here in a minute whenever we seek external grant funds that is facilitated through the superintendent's office i can say that we do have some supplemental funds that come to us on an annual basis through some of our title grants. And we can certainly consider that uh, and how we prioritize our needs and align our funding. Mike, what would you add regarding uh, our pursuit of external funds? Correct me if I'm wrong, Dow did give us some funds besides the annual as well <clears throat> to carry out some of these initiatives. So we have, uh, we better honor that we receive some, and I believe there's a little bit left over on that as well. Um, yeah. But we certainly have local funding sources that may and have always supported us. Um, and I got to believe that Michigan Department of Education or state are going to begin to prioritize this as well. And so, Brad, if there's an opportunity there, we'll certainly seek grants to go after those pieces as well. So. Okay. Yeah. I might just add on to that. Thank you both for commenting. Um, I know there are a number of, of corporate opportunities that are in our region that we can um that we can certainly ask about grant funding so dow is not the only one that that uh, grants funds for training in this space so if any of the board or any of our administrators are aware of any possible opportunities to partner with a, a company that would be terrific how much do we need john don't say that because <laughs> Well, I'll send it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we can do great training for how much do we need? Realistically, um, it really depends, honestly, if we bring folks in or if we send our send our administrators and teachers to trainings. Um, those are very different price points. So bringing folks in, um, we can put together a proposal for the Pinto, all the way to the Cadillac, and um, we can choose the most appropriate space for each each level of that. We can do a lot for free, I guess is what I'm saying. 
we can do a lot of really great training for free, particularly if we collaborate with experts who are in our stage. So I'll take that as an action that I'll give y'all some general numbers by the time we meet again in August. And maybe that's something that we can talk about at our next workshop. Okay. Good, question. Good question, John. Yep. There's, there are some fabulous speakers out there, so certainly well, in, I in, am, in, um, I'm on a budget. There, there, are, there are, you know, keep in mind, we have large business enterprises in the community for whom yep. 50, a $50,000 ask is, is one conversation. We have other mm -hmm. institutions in the community where $5,000 is a very realistic ask. And I think sometimes right. we focus on, on the big ones and we kind of forget sometimes that if we work the network that we have, and we have people who genuinely want to invest yes. in what we're doing. And so knowing approximately what price point we're looking at is helpful in, you know, for us to be ambassadors for the district and, and go out and, and look for that assistance. So if you could yeah, totally give us agree. into, you know, I think of things in terms of Chevy, Buick, and Cadillac. So give us Chevy, yeah. give us Buick, and, and give us Cadillac. That'd be helpful. You yeah, got it. We, we, we will you work on that. But we did look at an equity audit that um, Penny looked at that was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you do bring outside experts, I'm not sure the Cadillac is where we're going to go to the school district. <laughs> yeah. We we may be rolling more in the Buick space, which is totally good. So we there is um, there's a wealth of expertise out there, and and I agree. I think that's a great way to look at it. We I think the other opportunity that you just mentioned, John, is that we want we want the community to feel engaged, and sometimes a way for them to do that is to provide training for our people. That's a really direct benefit. To the system so anytime we can make that possible that's a great thing well whatever car we're rolling in we're rolling forward right that's that's the we important are thing. well said okay okay speaking of rolling forward this? let's let's keep rolling um so mm -hmm. that takes us up to 2.3 uh this is the uh, DEI strategic action for board subcommittee. Is that what you have, Amy? Uh, that is, I'm not sure what that is, to be okay. perfectly honest. It, it says What's on my one? agenda, I'll read it verbatim. It says, for information, DEI strategic action board subcommittees. Okay. Um, I will just maybe note that our board subcommittees uh, should have DEI now embedded in the um, fabric of each of those subcommittees. One of the projects that we're working on over the next two weeks is to understand which of the strategic actions roll up to which subcommittee. And this is really, I think, a great opportunity for the board to see firsthand, real time and over time, um, the scope and scale of the work that our district is doing. Um, it's it's hard to process all of it in one shot, but as we see it over time in each of the subcommittees, I think that's going to be a really um, important experience. And then certainly allows the board to understand, um, you know, accountability and that oversight of the process so that as you meet as a board, you will be able to look at it more holistically as a process and how it is affecting our um, engagement of our student staff and other employees. John, I'm having a little technical difficulty on my side, but um, this is the concept that most of our legwork occurs in the subcommittee structures. And so, Amy, right, we're trying to figure out what it aligns, you know, does an equity audit in the HR department align in our HR subcommittee, and that would be accurate, so, okay. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks for the clarification on that, uh, both of you. Thanks. So that takes us to 2.4, Amy. This is uh, the board, another action item. This is the DEI statement declaration or proclamation. Yes. Either or. Or, or proclamation. Yeah. Whatever is the correct term for us. Well, yeah, the, the, I, always um, say, I said declaration because that's what's on the agenda, <laughs> but I have the proclamation sure. in my hand. Perfect. 
I'm good either way. A um, couple of documents that I sent out earlier this, well, late last week, would have been some best practices that we have um, sourced from other leaders in the state. So you can see from those documents um, and from some conversations that have been had, I think Penny had a great conversation with, with West Bloomfield leaders earlier today um, about what they have done in their respective districts around making a statement. And if we refer back to the, the document we just viewed around alignment to the petition, one of those is make that statement. Um, that, acknowledge, that acknowledgement statement and a go forward statement of who we are and the work we are going to do as a district. And so we did a little bit of work with um, some other districts to understand their process. And so I sent a couple of examples to y'all and then I know that there is a, a draft document that we wanted to walk through. One thing that I did in preparation for that draft, draft document, we said words matter. And so I did a glossary for us of definitions of key terms that are in that document so that we can all be on the same page about what the words actually mean so that the statements are all clear and that we stand behind them. So I wanted to ask you all as a team if um, I know we are at 624 and I want to just level set again real quick to say this one is an important one for us to get right and I know that you all feel similarly and so if we need to work on it a little bit tonight, kind of get through some of those initial pieces, have some, some discussion, and then uh, simmer on it and work on it again in August, if that's what it means to get it right, then that's okay. Um, I would rather us do that than rush tonight and then um, not really have the time that we need to ensure that we're aligned. Does I that sound reasonable to y'all? I think that sounds uh, extraordinarily reasonable. Um, and that's kind of where, okay. where I was leaning personally as, as a, a member. Um, I wanted to make sure we spend the proper amount of time digesting this and understanding it um, and talking about any concerns that any of the individual board members or administrators or anybody has, um, because it is critical that we get it right and get it right the first time. Yeah. So I, I, will also I, I guess in that light, let's, let's start picking away. Okay. Um, would we like to go through definitions or, do, or did y'all feel comfortable about the list of definitions that we had? And I'll maybe just pull it up so that we all know what we're talking about together. Okay, this is not fancy, it's just a Word document. We will have just so the board knows we will have a project team because this has been a, a consistent ask from our teachers and I totally get it and our administrators. We will have a project team that's going to launch relatively soon in the next couple of weeks that's going to compile one of these for the district that's going to say these are the words that we, we uh, live by as a district. This is what they mean. This is what we will um, consistently use so that everybody's clear. So that project team will, will help us uh, expand this a little bit. So I, I literally went through the document and just highlighted each of our keywords and defined each of them and ensured that we had sources in the research that supported those sources. For most things, um, there are a few around um, diversity, equity, and inclusion that have been defined a jillion different ways. And so I have included definitions here that, um, that from my experience have been useful. Um, I'm going to just start at the top and walk us down real quick. So and I, what I would so, love, go ahead. Amy, I'm sorry. I just wanted just to understand. So the go definitions ahead. are just a compilation of information that you've gathered based on research or are they actual mm -hmm. a, a definition outlined somewhere um, in a different source? Yes, and. Okay. Yes, and. So some of them are directly sourced and quoted and those sources are at the bottom. Um, a few of those are are not sourced directly, but they are a compilation of experience okay. and research. I, I don't know that you have to walk through all of them, Amy, because you sent it out as pre-work. That I, yep. I'm good. I'm good with my pre-work. You're good. I, I did it. You're good as written. Are there any that we need to address? I studied mine too. 
Mm-hmm. Any, any big questions about any of them? No, I don't think so. When I, okay. when I look at anti-racism, I guess, you know, I'm halfway through the how to be an anti-racist book and, mm-hmm. and they talked about racism in that book. And, and one of the definitions or one of the uh, ta- things that I learned was racism is about when any individual is treated uh, less than because of any circumstance, whether it be the color of your skin, your religion, your sexual orientation, your, your uh, gender. And I never thought of it like that. And so, um, but, but your, your definition is different than that book. So I just want, you know, I appreciate you putting them down, but um, yeah, it's important to understand so, what, what we're talking about. I actually sourced, yes, totally agree. And I actually sourced the, the racism and anti-racism definitions from the very front of Ibram Kendi's book because what I love about his definitions are that they are about um, choice and agency. So, and we can talk about this in August um, when we have a little more time to unpack it, but there's a lot of power. And I think particularly in a school setting where we are teaching students to have agency and ownership over their educational journey. Um, there's a lot of power in um, dismantling kind of that good, bad binary around you're a racist and you're not a racist. There are racist choices that you can make. There are racist ideas and beliefs that you can choose to espouse. There are racist policies that we can, that we can put into place, but we also have a choice to do that in an anti-racist way. And so I chose those two um, in particular because I felt like in the school setting, those were really powerful. Um, And so, and then the systemic racism is the natural outflow of that, that says it's the whole sum of policies and practices and laws that create um, valuation and devaluation and opportunity for people. And so in thinking about moving forward to the declaration or or, um, proclamation, I guess I'm gonna have to get used to proclamation. Um, So much of that is about a system that exists everywhere and choosing to build a new system. And um, some of that, so much of that is choice around policy, practice, law, and behavior. Um, We're not locked in to racist or anti-racist. We're we get to choose anti-racist so it's very liberating i think yeah it's a mindset it's not it's not fixed yes and we we teach growth mindset and i'm a i'm a huge proponent of teaching growth mindset this is a growth mindset direction um i did include some additional terms that are not in the document and i did that because those are terms that we are hearing regularly in lots of this dialogue and discussion And so I I just included those for us going forward. All right. Y'all ready to dig in? Sure. Okay. Okay. I think that I have the most recent version and um, it's taken it just a minute to come up I'm going to close a couple other things and see if I can make it go faster Okay, here we go. Can y'all see that okay? It's coming. Penny, do you happen to be in this document or can you be in this document? It's up. Perfect. And then it's uh, it's in our, it's in a shared document. So perhaps um, we will 
we will make edits as we go. Okay, so I'm in there, Amy. I can help with that. Fabulous, thank you. Um, Penny, would you mind sharing real quick um, the feedback that you got from your discussion with West Bloomfield this morning? I thought that was so good. Sure, I'll actually publicly publicly acknowledge for you all we. Um, we, we sourced some of these statements directly from both uh, West Bloomfield and from the Detroit Public School statement. And I spoke, um, spoke this morning with Dr. Hill, who's the superintendent at West Bloomfield, and uh, sought his permission to use some of the language. And he was very gracious in that and just encouraged us to be bold in our work and uh, expressed the importance of this and sort of the camaraderie that we can have as school districts when we're all engaged with this. Similarly, I had an email exchange with Dr. Vitti, who is the superintendent of Detroit Public Schools. Uh, he also um, felt honored that we are lifting some of his language and editing and gave us permission to do that and shared a similar notion that uh, the more of us engaged in this work, the more that we are really gonna change the system that is public education. It's great to feel like we have partners in this, particularly partners who are paving the way for us so that this is not, um, this is not us leading alone in front. This is really us coming along with uh, leaders that are, are paving the way, which is a very comforting thought. We're all learning together and leading together. So what might be good is for us to just, just kind of knock out each one of these. I would really love, this is the space where I would really love to hear from y'all. Um, I think in, in many meetings, not just board meetings, but all meetings, um, there is this expectation that if I don't hear from you, that's a yes. And this is not a space where I feel like that is a, that's a good plan. I think it would be great for us to really um, engage in, and be vocal about this. Because um, I want it to feel like it's yours and that um, it's, it's a good direction for us to move forward as a district. So with that said, this is, uh, this is go forward. Um, first, first, thing, first things first, resolution to change the system, eliminate racism, and create more equitable and inclusive schools for all. That directly goes back to our vision statement. I, I love it, and the, the thing that uh, when you say it goes directly back to the vision statement, you know, it, it says what we want to do, but when we start with the vision of lead with respect, trust, and courage, then openly talking doesn't become so frightening anymore, and challenging mm. doesn't seem so negative anymore, and confrontation doesn't seem uh, so brutal anymore. <clears throat> When we, we lead with respect, trust, and courage, then we look at intention and how, again, we can move forward as a team. And I just know from experience in different uh, times in my life when people have come to attack something I might have said, uh, how it's deflating and uh, not very productive, but when they come with uh, you know, the uh, constructive criticism or, or wanting to move together in, um, in a way to, to imp make improvements or have better outcomes, then there's just energy around that. Thank you for that. And it's courageous work. Any other thoughts on our, our number one statement? Everybody good? I can't see all of y'all, so y'all don't have to tell me. Good. You're getting, you're getting some thumbs good. up. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Let me know. Um, we'll move on to the first of many whereas statements. This is a thing. So MPS Board of Education stands firmly against all acts of individual and systemic racism, and we will openly talk, challenge, and confront racism. I like that in light of what you just said, Pam, that feels very 
that feels very actionable and um, I have great hope and anticipation about that. Anything to add here, team? Nothing to add. Okay. I think it's very clear. Um, I'm good. Next. Thank you. Good. Next, whereas statement. Uh, there is a long history of racism, discrimination, and segregation within our country, which has adversely impacted educational outcomes for students of color, specifically black students. And I think we know there's tons of research to show that, research and data to show that. That really sets up our history at the biggest picture. Okay? Okay. Good. I see nodding. Nope. Whereas we wish to end injustices, inequity, and violence, and we unequivocally declare that Black Lives Matter and that an injustice to one is an injustice to all. I like the statement injustice to one is an injustice to all. That's a I strong too, statement for me, too. Mm -hmm. I agree. I like that statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing we have to always uh, remind ourselves is, you know, we got to look out for everyone. For sure. Yeah, I can see that being a classroom rule. Right, that 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 is something that at, at all ages, we we can understand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Whereas we believe that schools must play a vital role in dismantling systems that have marginalized students staff and families of color. So that gets at the system aspect. You know, I think Phil about the conversations that, that um, have been going on around um, inequity, socioeconomic inequity. And this statement, this statement really points at that for me, you know, thinking systemically. Mm -hmm. Okay, we good there? It's good. Y'all are trucking. Whereas, I love this one, we believe that educators are lifelong learners and should be provided the necessary resources to facilitate discussions of race and racism to help students understand our full history and our collective humanity. I really so, like this one in terms of, you know, not just educators, but we all should be lifelong learners, especially in, in this, this area. And I, I'm still rattling around the, the idea of teaching our, our parents as well and, mm -hmm. and just how much, how much power that can have. You know, I, I reflect, so I have kids in, in preschool or daycare. And when our son first started going to daycare, we were encouraged to start attending the same conscious discipline courses that are kids teachers in preschool were teaching so that we used the same language drove the same behaviors reacted the same way so that student our, our students our kids had the same corrective and and positive influences at home and and at school and just reflect on how much that helped me as a as a new parent um, and just thinking more and more about about <clears throat> this statement and, and our previous conversation as to how powerful that that really can be going forward. Um, mm. it's, it's exciting to think about. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, I love what you said about um, what's rattling around your brain around parents too. I, I have had some of the most impactful conversations of my, my life relationship with my mother over the last two years just has been really incredible so never stop Amy, learning can we make that statement more inclusive and put in something instead of just educators sure what what would y'all think about saying we believe that we are all lifelong learners i like that our, our district community or something like that yes <clears throat> yeah
Okay. No, I like that. I think that, you know, originally we had said um, providing our educators the necessary resources. I think you can, um, you can honestly say that that also translates, you know, we're talking about providing training opportunities for our whole school community. So I think that's a fair statement. Do y'all agree? Even though we've changed it to mean all. Okay. Great. I like that change. I think that's great. Okay. The next one is a lot of numbers and I gave y'all um, some pre-read on the statistics for this. So you've got that background, but just know um, one change I want to point out that we made. So these are just the, the typical um, state mandated or federally mandated um, categories. So this is how it is reported for all school systems. Um, the one change that I did make was to add the word indigenous to American Indian and Alaskan um, because that is how many of our students might identify. So just know that, that that's why that is there um, to represent it correctly. Um, I wanna also point out that we included some statistics around our percentage of economically disadvantaged students. To be clear, those are the students that qualify for that under federal guidelines and then our students with disabilities as well. Um, I want to also learning. point out at the end, no, sure, it's important. Um, so this, this doesn't uh, maybe list every <coughs> dimension, of, dimension of diversity, but it lists the ones that we can quantify legally. Um, I love the end of the statement that says all students have diverse backgrounds and experiences and that diversity is a strength. Any questions on this piece or thoughts? Y'all good with it? Yes. Yep. Okay. There's a typo in there though, I think. I think Hispanic Latin X should be Latino maybe. Um, we can choose Latin X or Latin X is oh. um, inclusive of gender. Okay, got it. So it's up to y'all. Got it. Didn't know that. We're lifeline learners. <laughs> We're all learning. Okay, our next statement says, whereas the board acknowledges a lack of diversity in our administrative and educational staff and believe that a diverse staff will benefit our students, district, and community. Okay, y'all support that one as written? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas the board will support the implementation of strong actions through the diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy, including necessary policy changes. That's pretty straightforward. Whereas as a school board and district, we value, oh, go ahead, Phil. I was just, does that read as though we have, I mean, I'm just going back to our subcommittee discussion. Does that read as though we have a separate and distinct DEI inclusion strategy? I'm just thinking that we, we make policy changes and do our work in the various subcommittee meetings. So Phil may answer my question. Maybe weigh in, but um, um, I believe that question states that uh, um, it does because it comes to the subcommittee. So if it's DR or not, that's one of the reasons we want it to be committee driven. And so any policy, the district only has one policy manual. There are all policies are there, and we use the policy policy strictly for that. We're not talking student code of conduct or building level guidelines. So I think it fits there. Did that, did that get at what you were asking, Phil? Yeah, I think Mike and I are completely aligned. I was just asking um, how that reads, but if we're, if we're all good, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Okay, whereas, whereas as a school board and district, we value each and every student, family and staff member and are committed to creating an equitable and anti-racist system that honors and elevates all. 
Amen. Well said. Yep. That one, that one feels good and clear. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. That's another one that, that I think could be kind of a, a unit mm -hmm. that is um, useful for building to tie action to. Scott, were you going to comment? No, no, no. I, I like that statement. I think it's, it's uh, very clear and very powerful. Okay. Okay. Well, we got to the resolution. Come on, Lynn. What you got? I think it's great. I think everything is well said. Okay. Thank you for that. I could see you smiling, so I knew you liked it oh. <laughs> <laughs> on that last one. Okay, we, we got to the resolution and it says, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education that we fully endorse and commit to our district vision statement, lead with respect, trust, and courage. Ensure an equitable, collaborative, and inclusive culture. Enable all to su achieve success. Furthermore, the Board of Education makes the following commitments to action and change. Okay. Number one, the board is committed to eliminating racism, bigotry, hate, and violence in any form. Now you can see why we started to, why I started to make the document around definitions because we have a lot of those kind of keywords throughout the document. So racism and bigotry as two different ideas that are similar, mm -hmm. and then hate and violence. We good with that one? The board charges the superintendent and administrative team to create opportunities to openly discuss, challenge, and confront racism and inequities. Yep. I think that one's great. Um, that, that's going to be a good, that's a common practice we've already started putting into place. And it's, I think that's going to be a real move forward for us. It's good. Uh, number three, the board charges the superintendent and administrative team to implement the DEI strategy, including an equity audit, um, and that's broad, so that's, that covers pre-audits and those other steps as well, to examine policy, practices, curriculum, and instruction, increasing the diversity of our staff, and the ways in which the district can center the needs of our students and the experiences of those who have been historically marginalized. that work for y'all? Mm -hmm. So that's not, that is not um, exclusive of any other things we may do, but it just includes some of those key items that we know are important. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. On to number four, the board and school district commit to engaging in deep learning, dialogue, action steps, and establishing real relationships and partnerships with families and other organizations that are working to dismantle racism and to ensure all students achieve their full potential and succeed. Again, going back to our vision statement. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The board is committed to honest and transparent transformation of district culture and practices. So students, families, community members, and staff feel safe visible, valued, respected, and connected. And so this really gets at, you know, we, we are doing some of that well. We've got other areas where we know we need to do work and we just commit to be to honest. Um, I, we always use the, the terminology of um, radical self-analysis, right? We look at where we are, we move forward with the work that we need to do. So honest and transparent transformation. Any, yes. Any feedback on this piece? Pam, we've got your safe, visible, valued in there. <laughs> Good. I really like that one. Okay. Lynn, did you have something? I was going to say I really like the word visible, um, you know, the valued and connected as well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've talked before about how school is the town square, right? We have the cross section of of our whole community represented at school, 
And so this really gets at the, the entirety of, of our community, and I really like that. Okay, number six, the board charges the superintendent and administrative team to outline expectations for all employees regarding equity and inclusion and provide opportunities for employees to be reflective about their own biases, engage in anti-racist training district-wide, and create learning spaces that encourage open dialogue about racism and anti-racism. Clear expectations, opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to charge you and we're going to resource you. Okay. The board charges the superintendent and administrative team to explore integrating additional content and resources that are racially and culturally relevant into curriculum classrooms and within all school buildings. That one feels like a go do. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the board recognizes that students of all ages are able to talk about bias, race, and the impacts of racism, and charges the superintendent and school leadership with implementing anti racist programs begin beginning at elementary school. There's some great resources out there, even for preschoolers. Good. Um, I'm moving. Program does great with that. Yeah. I think we're we are nearly to the end. Um, number nine, the the board requires that all reports of racist or discriminatory language, attitudes, behavior, and action are responded to following our district code of conduct and policy. We commit to educating students and staff on the impact of their actions and fully understanding the harm they have committed. And we commit to student and staff accountability for actions prohibited by our district code of conduct and policies. Hey, Amy, can I just go back to, to eight for a second? Because sure. there were a couple of spots where we used the term school leadership instead of administrative team. And I think we caught the other ones, but in mm -hmm. eight, it's still there. Was that an intentional? definition or should that be administrative team? That's a good catch. That was catch. an error on my part, so okay. I'll leave okay. that right Just now. Wanted to make sure we bring consistent. Thank you. Yep, perfect. I can't see all of number. I can't see number all nine. of number nine. Let me come up. There we go. Is that better? A little bit more, Amy. There That's go. good. Mm. Thank you. We are coming down to the wire, Amy. Yeah, we are. Okay, so we're good on number nine or do we need to take some more time on number nine? We're good? We're okay. good, mm -hmm. yeah. Number 10. Board superintendent administrative team will monitor and assess the district's transformation as an anti-racist organization and as a D in general as a DEI organization. The board will address anti-racism actions and monitor the implementation and outcomes of the DEI strategy in each board committee meeting and will receive monthly updates on district work to carry out the objectives of these commitments. So that goes back to our new uh, subcommittee plan. Be it further resolved, the board commits to its own work as individuals and our collective work revenue in the district to become equitable and anti-racist in behaviors, actions, and policies. We are committed to changing the system and will integrate this resolution in the annual district goals. So we got just a couple of minutes. I'd like to take your, take your collective decision on what you wanna do with this one. Do you feel comfortable with it as written as we've just made those changes that you suggested and we move forward with it? 
I'm not feeling anything from y'all that feels like we um, have any major sticking points or anything we need to simmer on. Amy, I'm not feeling like there's any major sticking points, but um, I'm also uh, would like to, after I'm rested, take a, a look at it again and just go over it. So I was, um, I guess I would propose we look at this and bring it up in August and vote vote on it. Okay, I agree. I agree with Pam. Great. Then we will provide to you the updated version so that all of you can have that and the uh, definition to work through. And then we'll, we'll make that our number one um, action in our August workshop. That great. would be great. And then certainly, if any other questions come up in the meantime or clarification, you, you know where to find me so we can talk those through. Well, I appreciate all the work. This is a lot of work pull, pulling all this together for sure and to get input from the Detroit schools and from, where was the other school? West we had about West Bloomfield. Yeah. West Bloomfield. So thank you for all the legwork. This is worthy work. We want it to be right. Yes. Yeah. Public so comment. I'm at, oh, public comment. Public comment. Adjourn and start the next meeting. Okay. Sorry, so we Mike. What can you repeat? Is there any word on? I think so. You're going to close this one down and send a new link, or do we just use the previous one? You have, to, you, have to, you have to open it up for public comment, Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, at this time, let's let's open the floor for public comment. Uh, if there's anybody out there that wishes to uh, speak, now's the time. Hearing none. Anybody on your end, Mike? No, I think um, with our link earlier, our tech, um, we only had Johnny. I think Johnny's going to address at the next meeting, so um, I think we're good. Okay. All right, uh, that'll Great bring work. us to, I'm sorry. Great work. Oh, thank you. Th thank you for all your thank help you, in explaining this. Um, that being said, it is seven o'clock, so I will uh, mm -hmm. take a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Support. Support. Motion by John, support by Pam, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we stand adjourned. See you guys in a minute.